a lot of Canadian wants to invest in Mortgage Investment Corporation. In this video, I'm going to explain what Mortgage Investment Corporation is, what are the pros and cons of investing within this kind of corporation, and I'm going to go through two examples of how to analyze a Mortgage Investment Corporation's portfolio so you understand how these corporations are investing in real estate market. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ahmed Mahian. I'm a certified financial planner. And in this channel, I share my financial knowledge so that you can avoid costly financial mistakes. So before I start this video, I want to give a big shout out to the website Wawa. This video was impossible for me to make without the resources that they put out on their website. And I want to make sure that you understand that this video is just for educational only purpose. I'm not recommending investing in mortgage investment corporation whatsoever. And if you want to invest, make sure to talk to a licensed professional before you invest within these corporations. So to understand the mortgage investment corporation, let's take a look at how the mortgage are funded in Canada. From the chart, you can see that most of the mortgage that Canadians get are from the big six banks. So this is the data from 2019. And you can see that RBC, TD, Scotiabank, CIBC, BMO, and National Bank, these six banks control almost 67% of the mortgage market. Two out of three mortgages are lent by these six big banks. The second spot is for credit unions. So credit unions are also similar to banks, which takes deposit money from Canadians and then lend out to the mortgage holders and they make money on the spread. But credit unions are typically regulated by the province. Whichever province the credit unions are located, they are regulated by their provincial body. For example, in Ontario, Meridian is one of the largest credit union and they have their own customer base and they lend out money to these mortgage holders. Credit unions controls roughly around 15% of the mortgage market. The third spot you can see here is monoline or alternative lenders, also known as B lenders. These financial institutions are little different than the credit unions and the big banks where they don't take any deposits from Canadians. So the way these monolines get funding is through the big banks. Also, they subscribe to a program called NHA Mortgage Backed Security Program. These monolines and B lenders work with mortgage brokers for a fee, and their rates are similar to the big banks. And in some cases, they might be a little bit less than the big banks. The number four option is smaller banks, which are similar to the big banks, but they operate in a much smaller scale. And you can see from the chart that ICIC Bank, Equitable Bank, these are the banks that fall into this category. And the last category, which is the topic of my video today, is the private lending. So private lending can be both institution and individual. As you can see from the chart, private lending is a very small percentage in the mortgage market in Canada. The private lending space, when an institution or corporation lend out money, these corporations are called mortgage investment corporation. On the other hand, when individual lend out money, those are called private lending individual basis. For example, a lot of time, mom and pop investors that have liquid cash of a few hundred thousand dollars, they typically work with the lawyer and mortgage broker to lend out money on an individual basis. However, mortgage investment corporations are in institutional side and they work with lawyers and mortgage brokers to lend out money. Now, each of these banks have their preference when they lend out money. For example, big banks and credit unions typically lend out money to better credit worthy borrowers, meaning that they only lend out money to prime borrower. Whereas B lenders and private lenders typically lend out money to subprime borrower. Now, subprime borrowers are typically high risk to the lender because oftentimes they do not have enough income to support the mortgage or sometimes they have credit score which is much lower than the prime borrower. And sometimes these subprime borrowers do not have job security and they are typically declined by a prime lender or a big bank. Now let's take a look at how these mortgage rates are based depending on the lender type. If you are taking a mortgage from big lenders like RBC, TD, Scotiabank, then 
you will be qualified as a prime borrower. Because you are more qualified borrower, your interest rate will be much lower. Now, if they go to a private lender, their interest rate on the mortgage will be substantially higher than the prime lenders. And as you can see from the chart, Wawa website mentioned that average mortgage interest rate for big lenders is around 4 to 5%. Now, these data are taken back in 1929. These data are taken back in 2019. I'm recording this video late 2023, so this number will be much different today. But the idea is same where the private lending interest rate is much higher than the big bank's interest rate. And it is just because of the fact that people who are borrowing in the private lending space have much higher likelihood of defaulting their mortgage compared to a prime borrower. Now let's shift the gear and focus on the topic of our discussion today, which is Mortgage Investment Corporation. So Mortgage Investment Corporation is a type of company which actually lends out money to the subprime borrower. When somebody gets a mortgage from big banks or private lenders, typically they're assessed based on five different factors. The first factor is the capacity to repay, which is basically how much money they make. Do they make enough money to cover their mortgage? The second criteria is the credit score. The credit score is basically an indicator that tells us if you are more likely to, to pay back and can range from anywhere from 300 to 900 to qualify for a mortgage in the big banks space, somebody typically needs a minimum credit score of 680. Then the third factor is the collateral. What that is, how much equity you have in the property. For example, if somebody has a $500,000 mortgage, but their property is worth a million dollar, that means they have 50% loan to value ratio. So the lower the ratio, the better it is. Because that means if somebody defaults on the mortgage, the bank can still sell the property for a profit and cover their mortgage amount. The fourth character is how much net worth somebody has. What that means is if somebody has a $2 million net worth where they have lots of retirement assets and lots of other assets, that gives an indication to the bank that this person is worthy to lend. Whereas some other person who does not have any net worth other than their property, they might have a higher risk. And the last factor that affects the mortgage application is character. How much job security somebody has or how much stability they have in their career this history goes to the character factor. These mortgage investment corporations or mix raise money from investors like you and I. Because this corporation typically lend out money to subprime borrower for a higher interest rate, they raise money from investors like you and I, and then they lend out this money to these mortgage holders. Let's say lending money at 10% rate of return to these mortgage holders and giving a profit of 7% to its investors, they're making money on that 3% spread. So the bigger the fund that they manage, the bigger the profit that they can make for their shareholders. And when you and I invest within this corporation, we basically buy a unit from these corporations. Now, mortgage investment corporations falls under Income Tax Act, and they have to follow certain rules. The first rule is the company has to be a Canadian corporation. So a foreign corporation cannot be a mortgage investment corporation. The second rule is the fund that they lend out has to meet certain guidelines. For example, they cannot lend out for uh, develop real estate. They cannot invest in properties that are located outside of Canada. The MIC has to have at least 20 shareholders with no shareholders ownership greater than 25%. The fifth requirement is majority of their lending has to be in the residential space. Now, when somebody invests in a mortgage investment corporation, they're basically buying a unit from that corporation. 
The Mortgage Investment Corporation is a flow-through entity. Any profit that the Mortgage Investment Corporation generates typically flows through the shareholders, meaning that the MIC does not have to pay any taxes on the profit as long as they distribute all the profit to its unit holders. So this concept is very similar to the mutual fund industry where if you and I invest in mutual fund, the mutual fund company do not pay any taxes, they flow through those profits and capital gain to the shareholders. Now, how much taxes you will pay, it really depends on which type of account you are investing that uh, unit. Since mortgage investment corporations typically lend out money to subprime borrower, there is an added risk to the MICs. These mortgage borrowers do not have the same capacity to repay the loan. Now, to mitigate this problem, the Mortgage Investment Corporation typically takes two steps. The first step is they lend out money typically in a shorter maturity. It can be one year, or it can be 18 months, but the average duration of their mortgage is one to two years. The second way they mitigate their risk is by capping the loan to value ratio. We will see in a few minutes that different companies have different cap on this loan to value ratio, but in generally, the ballpark number is 75% of loan to value ratio. If somebody has a million dollar property, this mortgage investment corporation will not lend out more than $750,000 to that particular borrower. The amount of taxes that an investor would pay will depend on if the fund is invested through a non-registered account or an RSP or a TFSA. So we all know that if somebody invests money in RSP, then any income that they receive from this mix will be deferred. So that means they don't have to pay any taxes in the same year, but when they take out money from the RSP, that's the year they will have to pay taxes. If the money is invested through tax-free savings account, then the entire net profit is tax-free because we all know TFSA does not trigger any taxable income. But if somebody is investing in this mortgage investment corporation through their non-registered account, then any income that mortgage investment corporation generates, they will be taxed as ordinary income. It really makes sense for somebody to invest in an RSV or a TFSA. Now, this is where you need to talk to a financial planner who will give you their opinion based on looking at your overall picture. Mortgage investment corporations can be both public or private. If it's a corporation which is public, then it trades on the public stock exchange like Toronto Stock Exchange. If an MIC is a private corporation, then they typically work with an exempt market dealer. So exempt market dealers are a special type of licensed professional who are expert in dealing one particular type of securities. So the exempt market dealer's responsibility is to screen out investors and making sure that the investors that are investing in type of corporations are given enough information so that they can take informed decision. Typically, exempt market dealers are paid by these MIC corporations and they receive the commission when they sell these units to the investors. A lot of these in exempt market dealers screen out investors and making sure that whoever is investing in these corporations are accredited investors. So an accredited can be someone who is making over $200,000 of income as a single person, or if they have a spouse and their household income is more than $300,000 for the last couple of years, or somebody has a net financial assets of over a million dollar or a net assets of over five million dollar. So they are all categorized as accredited investors. A lot of this mortgage investment takes money only from accredited investors, but there are smaller MICs that takes money from other investors who are not accredited. Now, so far, you might be thinking that investing in this mortgage investment corporation can be very attractive, which is in most of the cases. But when the market is in turmoil, especially in 2022, when the interest rate has 
went up a lot and there has been a big loss in the real estate market. There are mortgage investment corporations that are suffering a significant loss in their investments. So when that happens, these mortgage investment corporations freezes withdrawal from this fund. So this is one of the biggest concern of investing in this fund, where when these corporations sees greater losses in real estate market, they stop any withdrawal. So even if you want to take your money back, they cannot give you any money back because in order to give you your money back, they have to sell those loans at a loss and then they can give you money. But because these real estate investments are typically illiquid, and when the market collapse, there is very little liquidity, then these funds can suspend withdrawal for months. Here I can show you a screen. As you can see, so Rothspend, one of the largest Canadian private mortgage lenders, they froze investors' withdrawal. Mortgage investment corporations are not as much as regulated like corporations which are in the business of stocks, ETFs, mutual fund. They are more regulated. Because these mortgage investment corporations are regulated in a more relaxed environment, there is less investors' protection. The people who you are dealing with normally are not as much regulated like the securities industry. Now, from the Wawa website, you can see they have listed the top mortgage investment corporations in Canada. As you can see from the list, there is MCAN, there is Atrium, there is Canix, there is CanGuard, there is Farm Capital, there is Reverie, CMI, AP Capital, Timber Creek Financial. So all of these are top mortgage investment corporations in Canada. And if you want to know more about these companies, go to their website and check out their financial disclosure. Now, in this section, I'm going to go through two of these and explain you how this works. Now, the first one is Atrium Mortgage Investment Corporation. So this is a publicly traded company. So that means if you want to invest in these mortgages, then you have to buy the Atrium shares from Toronto Stock Exchange. Now, Atrium invests primarily in residential market and commercial market. Their lending focus is in urban area primarily in Ontario and British Columbia. The ticker symbol for this company is AI. Now here are some fast facts for Atrium. So their average mortgage rates is 8.9% and the average mortgage term is 18 months. Their total mortgage portfolio is around $800 million and they primarily invest in Ontario. So 71% of their mortgage is in Ontario. Now from the mortgage type, as you can see, they have almost $250 million in high-rise residential apartment building and mid-rise residential. There is a little bit of money in the low-rise residential market too. So as you can see, they typically invest in large buildings. And then they have a small investment in the commercial space. They don't typically invest in smaller detached house. Their loan portfolio is typically large buildings. And as you can see, their mortgage interest rate for first mortgage is around 8.8%. For second mortgage, which is riskier, that is almost 10%. And for residential side, it's 9.4%. And for the commercial size, it's 8.8%. As we already explained, they typically lend in the GTA space. And their second biggest market is in BC. Now, their average mortgage interest rate is roughly around 9 to 10%. These numbers is based in 2022's data. So probably in 2023, these interest rates are a little bit higher than 2022 data. Now, the second MIC I'm going to explore is CMI, Mortgage Investment Corporation. So this is a private MIC. So if you want to invest in this corporation, then you have to pay a 1% annual fee and your minimum investment has to be at least $5,000. So they primarily invest in urban area. Most of the MICs typically invest in urban area because the type of mortgage that they invest, they want to have a more liquid market for that. And if you go to the rural area, there is less liquidity and they don't want to invest in rural area. As you can see from the chart, CMI's focus is in the residential side. They invest in properties that are owner-occupied or 
detached house. So CMI has three different funds. As you can see, CMI prime mortgage funds, from the name of the fund, you can imagine that they are typically given to prime borrower. So borrowers who have more credit worthiness and their target return is around 6 to 7%. Their average LTV is just below 60%. The average mortgage size is around $200. Their average mortgage rate is 6.5% in that fund. And total portfolio of these mortgages is around $3.7 million. So this is a much smaller fund. The balanced mortgage fund, which is a mix of both prime borrower and subprime borrower. So their target return is a little bit higher because they are lending out to more risky investors. They're charging more interest rate. And average LTV is around 66%. The average mortgage size is a little bit larger, which is around $350,000. And the average mortgage rate is just over 7%. This is a larger fund than prime mortgage fund, just over $120 million assets. These primarily invest in first and second mortgages. The third fund that company has is high yield opportunity fund. This fund is targeted towards more subprime borrowers, the lowest category of borrower, and they carry substantially higher risk. That's why the target return for this fund is around 10 to 11 percent. Because they have more risk, their LTV is a little bit high, which is 76 percent, and these mortgages are typically smaller. 240,000 is the average, and their mortgage rate is just over 9.5%. This is a much smaller fund than the balanced fund, and the size of the uh, portfolio for the high yield opportunity fund is around $40 million. They typically invest in second charge mortgage. Those who don't know what first mortgage and second mortgage is, first mortgage is if the borrower defaults on a mortgage, whoever lender is in first charge, they get priority first. If somebody is lending second and they are called second mortgage, they get the second priority after all the money is paid to the first lender. So that's why the second mortgage is typically more risky and that's why they charge higher interest rate. So you can see from the chart 75% of the mortgage is given to Ontario and almost 20% of the mortgage is given to BC. You can imagine that both in BC and on Ontario, the property price is out of reach for most of the Canadians. And that's why people take more private lending from these two provinces. So if you are an investor who is trying to get some investment return by investing in this mortgage investment corporation, I highly recommend you do your due diligence because as I said, there is less protection in this market and your return will depend a lot on how these fund managers, so the people who are managing that fund, lending money. So if they do not lend money properly, then there is high risk of investing in this. So mortgage investment corporation, there is nothing wrong in investing in mortgage investment corporation as long as you understand the risk and the return opportunity and enough disclosure is given to you by these mortgage investment fund sponsors. But I highly recommend talk to your financial planner who understand this and make sure you understand the risk. When you talk to these mortgage investment corporation people, the they will always give you more rosy picture, but seek independent advice and make sure you go to a lawyer to discuss all these prospectus and all these documents that are given to you. I hope that explains a little bit of information how the Mortgage Investment Corporation works. If you like this video, please make sure to check out my other videos. If you need any help, please contact us. And again, this video 